Abortion rights have come under scrutiny worldwide after the US Supreme Court retracted the Roe v. Wade decision earlier this year, overturning the right to access abortion across America. In the Fort Nines last week, the Penguin News asked the KEMH and the Department for Health and Social Services for information about abortion services in the islands. However, there was a refusal to share this information for publication. This led to MLAs discussing the issue in the Legislative Assembly. Will the Honourable Gavin Short please describe to the House the health services policy and practice relating to the provision of abortion services, whether elective or for medical reasons? Will he please also explain the rationale behind the recent refusal to share this information when requested by local media? It is my understanding that medical termination of a pregnancy can take place here in Falkland, depending on whether it is deemed medically safe to do so, and this has to take into account such factors as the general health, age, etc. of the person involved, and that's up to nine weeks of pregnancy in most cases, as opposed to the time limit set out in our laws, which is 24 weeks, which are in themselves a maximum permitted time. To explain, the KMH do not undertake medical termination of pregnancies after nine weeks due to the increased risk and complications requiring surgical intervention, but they do support women to go overseas for termination of pregnancies post nine weeks. It was emphasised in the House that the Falkland Islands is pro-choice and a number of MLAs stated their own pro-choice beliefs. It was also made clear that information and support will be made readily available to women wanting to discuss their options with their doctor. Abortion is a divisive and sensitive topic and MLAs also urged anyone who had strong feelings about the access to provision to raise the issue with them. And I would like to issue a plea to those who may feel differently to the government policy to not target the KMH or individual medical professionals, but to speak with elected <coughs> members, as it is us, through Exco and the Legislative Assembly, who set our policies and laws. Medical professionals and the institution, that is the <coughs> KMH, are merely following those policies and laws. However, this issue brought further debate due to the refusal from the Department for Health and Social Services to provide the information to the Penguin News in the first place. From conversations, it is my belief that the perceived reluctance to go beyond their immediate response to the media query was made with the following very much in mind. The sensitivity of the subject, the feelings of those who had had a termination, a caution that making this subject high profile might deter some who would otherwise have availed themselves of the service, and the worry that if this became high profile, it could lead to the KMH and healthcare <coughs> professionals therein being targeted by those who hold contrary views to those uh, who follow the policies as agreed by the Falkland Islands government, as has been unfortunate, as has been an unfortunate lived experience only but a few years ago. There certainly is not an aspiration to withhold information to those who may need the service. And I don't believe it's a subject to be only discussed in hushed tones. My concern was that in limiting the information that was made to the public about such an important service, there was a risk that, albeit inadvertently, some sense of taboo could be perceived, or indeed that women might not feel able to access the service that they need at the time when it is needed. And for some, perhaps particularly younger women, uh, there may be uncertainty or fear about how to approach this subject. Knowledge is power and understanding what is available and how to, to uh, access that is, is um, you know, incredibly empowering. I too am pro-choice, I'm pro-transparency and I'm pro-policy and structure. And I, I, like my colleague, um, think that this is a really helpful discussion which led us to understand that there isn't a formal policy in place. And to me, I think this is causing or exasperating some of the issues here around, around communication. And I think this can be hopefully easily set aside. So I support um, the sentiment that my colleague just outlined. 
Abortion and the issues surrounding this treatment have now been brought to light and the formalisation of policy work will now be looked into. However, this debate, started by a request from local media for information on available medical services, has also left larger questions over the openness of government and the provision of information. No harm was intended, but we do find ourselves, I think, in a situation that could very easily have been avoided with just a little more openness, such as we've seen here today. And I hope that we can all learn from this.